The idea is based on the superposition principle, and that's a pretty common thing when you have small, well, in our case, we're talking about small deformations. But anytime you have small perturbations from some sort of reference position, uh, that's when the superposition principle can come up. So here's, it's such a cool name for such a simple uh, thing. Um, and the idea is just that in for our case and by that i mean um i guess the the only thing that matters in this case for us <clears throat> is the fact that the deformations are small but the stress tensor total is equal to and this is in a beam it's equal to the stress tensor due to tension plus the stress tensor due to bending moment plus the stress tensor due to the shear force plus the stress tensor due to the torque. Um, and when I talk about adding these stress tensors, they add the same way that vectors do, just element by element. Um, so for example, uh, if you have Stress tensor five zero two zero one zero uh, two zero negative three, and you add that to zero five two five zero negative four two negative four one. Uh, you just add them up element by element. So 5 plus 0 is 5. 0 plus 5 is 5. 2 plus 2 is 4. 5 plus 0 is 5. Um, 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4. Um, 2 plus 2 is 4. 0 minus 4 is minus 4. And then minus 2. Well, no. So I was just going to say that um, I made those two symmetrical. And notice that uh, if the, the two you're adding are symmetrical, the other one has to come out that way. So you never have to worry about adding stress tensors and they come out as something that, that can't be a stress tensor. Um, and the reason this works is basically like, um, I mean, you could imagine if you, if you bend something really sharply, you know, bend it all the way down to a very noticeable angle, and then you apply tension to it, you know, those are, those loading patterns are going to react in some unpredictable way. But if all of these things are very close to their original configuration, because we're talking about very small deformations, then you have to worry about that a lot less, and those things, uh, you get good accuracy by just calculating independently those loads, you know. First, think about a bar that's in pure tension, calculate the stress tensor. Now think about a bar that's in pure bending moment, calculate the stress tensor. So that's what we're going to do, add them all together at the end. Um, and the general idea is For each type of stress, um, the stress tensor will depend um, on the internal load at the desired point. So all the stuff we just went through for internal loads is going to be the starting point for the stress calculations. 
All right, well, we're going to start with the easiest case. Um, so, stresses due to tension and compression. Um, and we're going to use the coordinate system that we've used in all of our uh, in all of our internal loads calculations, where the x-axis is along the length of the beam, the y-axis is up, and the z-axis is out towards us. And at any point in the beam, that has an internal load or an internal tension T the normal stress in the X direction is equal to T over A where A is the cross-sectional area at that point Okay, so um, this doesn't say anything about where on the cross section you are, and that's because over the whole cross section, the stress is the same. So it doesn't matter if you're um, near the top of the beam or the middle of the beam or whatever, all that matters is the X position. Um, so let's do an example. Um, Let's say we have a beam that when we figure out the external loads, there's an 8,000 Newton force at the left end. At the middle, there's a 2,000 Newton force. And then at the end, there's a 6,000 Newton force. Um, and the cross-sectional area uh, let's say it's constant over the whole thing at 0 0.001 yeah meter squared so what are the stresses as functions of x you know how is that how is the stress in the beam going to change as you go along the length um, well we're always going to start by calculating the internal loads so how many cuts do we have to make normally we'd have to calculate the external loads but they're already given two cuts yep so the first cut is going to be for x between, oh, I didn't say how long this was. Uh, let's say half a meter each. Okay, so the first cut is from 0 to 0.5. Um, so we'll take some representative cut. We have the 8,000 Newton force at the left end, but we haven't gotten to the 2,000 Newton force yet. So the only other loads are the tension, the shear force, bending moment, all that stuff's going to be zero. All we have is uh, forces along the x-axis here, so I'm just going to write it like this. But if you wanted to go through the full calculation, you could calculate shear force is zero, moment zero, uh, fancy T is zero. 
Um, and then Newton's second law says negative 8,000 zero plus T zero is equal to zeros. So we got that T is equal to positive 8,000 for every X value between zero and 0.5. Um, and that's a positive value, so that means that that whole piece is in tension. And now cut two is between 0.5 and 1. So now we have the 8,000 here. And now somewhere else we have the 2,000 going the other way. And the tension. Um, and so Newton's second law says negative 8,000 zero plus positive 2,000 zero plus T zero is equal to zeros. And so T is equal to uh, 6,000. So now that we have the internal loads, For any X values between zero and 0.5, sigma XX is equal to positive 8,000 divided by 0 0.001. And so that's 8.0 times 10 to the six Pascal. And if you wanted to give the full stress tensor, that's the XX element. So that's 8.0, zero, zero, zeros everywhere else. If you write it in megapascals. And notice if you think about what that means, a positive, um, so a positive tension as an internal load means the thing's in tension. Uh, a negative value means compression. And now think about the stress element and it means the same thing. So we're gonna use the sign that we get for the internal loads to calculate that stress and it, it works out the meaning makes sense. Uh, I'll write that in a second. Um, and on the other half, for x in the range from 0 0.5 to 1, the xx stress is positive 6,000 divided by 0 0.001, and that's 6.0 times 10 to the 6 pascals. Um, and so the stress tensor on that half, for any point on that half, is 6.0, zeros everywhere else. In megapascals. So now what that says is, in this case, if you're trying to figure out where you're concerned about this bar breaking or deforming permanently or something like that, the half that, you know, the place that you want to investigate is the left half of this beam, okay? That's where the stresses are higher, and so that's what you're worried about. If it's good on the left half, then it's good on the right half, too, okay? Well, if the right half had a different cross-sectional area, then 
you know, say that the cross-sectional area got smaller on the right half of the beam, then it's possible that even though the internal loads are bigger on the left half, the stresses when you, when you divide by the cross-sectional area would be bigger on the right half. So this is the best indicator of uh, how concerned you are about fracture or whatever. Um, okay, so I want you to notice one thing. Um, trust the signs from the internal tension. Uh, that's going to be true for every one of these calculations, I think. Maybe not torsion, now that I think about it. But um, I'm going to make a point out of it every time that, that it's a thing. Okay. So um, we just, whether it's positive or negative coming from the internal loads, we use that signed value to calculate the stress. 